I am light. I am oxygen. I am energy. I am life. Feel the way its truth resonates with your inner consciousness. Feel it. Beyond being a vessel of energy or just the body you have, you are the living essence of the universe. Hey, hey, this is Allie with Awakening with Allie. Wow, that feels surreal to say. This is my new show, my new podcast. (laughs) I have been talking about this show now for months and months, and I kind of can't believe that I'm recording now. I'm going to be honest. This is my first solo episode for the show, and I'm recording it on... 220 2022 February 20th 2022 and this show is going live on 22222 wait a little wait until uh, last minute <laughs> I um I've recorded for months for this show with so many amazing guests that I can't wait for you all to hear but for myself I knew I needed to do the first episode and have a solo and I don't know but I just every time I would go to do it it just didn't feel connected it didn't feel like I was in a place to share. And so, of course, (laughs) um, my spirit guided me to share tonight when I'm like literally at the brink of releasing this. I'm like, sure, okay, (laughs) we're going with it. The energies of the world, everything's kind of crazy. We'll just go with it. And I have to say, I'm really not exactly sure what I want this first episode to be. I'm just going to kind of let my heart and spirit lead me as I've been on this journey for the last few years. And I guess that's where I could start. You know, I'm Allie, for those that don't know me. (laughs) Um, I have been a podcast host for quite a few years on different shows. My current show, Everything with Allie Levine, uh, that was originally called Stripped Down. I had a show with my girlfriend called Things Are Too Lazy to Blog About. I've done a few other podcasts, uh, little mini shows with other people. So I've been in the podcast space for quite some time, but I've never actually done um, podcast and video, but I felt very called for this show to add a video component because I feel like everything that's going on in the world and where everyone is right now, especially, it feels really good to be able to connect, even if you're not connecting in person. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take that leap, that faith over fear and go with video along with the audio. So this is new for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm Allie. If you don't know who I am, I have many hats I wear. I call myself a mompreneur. I'm a mom of two, two girls, uh, almost four and almost two. They are my lights of my life and they're part of my awakening journey. Um, and um, I guess, uh, you know, I've had many hats that I guess that I wear, many titles. I call myself a multi hyphenate, you know, um, TV personality, celebrity stylist, fashion expert in the lifestyle space, podcaster, content creator. But really most importantly for me um, is just being led by mind, body, and soul, especially my spirit. Um, I feel like over the last few years in my own awakening journey that's guided me to where I am today now, um, being on this show, Awakening with Ali, I really feel like God gave me this show. And when I say that, I don't say that lightly. I <laughs> I had a dream like six or seven months ago where I was just really just having kind of a random dream. And as this random dream was going on, I kept like seeing like myself doing a show. And I didn't understand it because I was like, what is this? Like I already have a podcast and I already do all this other stuff. Like what is this? And I kept trying to follow it and follow it. And I could not, I had no idea what it, what it was showing me. And I kind of just let it sit and wrote some stuff down, but I wasn't getting anything. So I was like, okay, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's just some weird random dream, but nothing's really random. Right. And so I just kept like, you know, trying to go back to it, but nothing was really coming. So I let it go. And then a few months in, after having that dream, I started really feeling pulled back from a lot of the things I was working on project wise. I was just feeling like my spirit wasn't leading me there. And I was feeling very disconnected and very not aligned. Um, I was feeling like my current show didn't feel the same way it had felt to me. Everything was just not resonating. Everything was feeling off. And um, a little backstory when I first kind of woke up 
in my world and as people call it woke up you know awakened enlightened whatever you know verbiage you want to use whatever resonates um for me when I felt like I woke up even a few years ago to start things started not resonating things started not aligning the way they used to things started um just not feeling good energetically and I started really becoming very aware of that it was very hard on my soul and myself because I was like wait but this is who I've been for so long like how am I not like, why is this not feeling good? Why is this energy not, you know, resonating? So anyways, fast forward, this is what, you know, played out for the last months um, after I had the first dream about this show. And then I had another dream and the dream was showing me talking about my awakening and my spiritual journey and what that's meant to me and and what it's kind of done to me. And I was like, oh, okay. Now I kind of know where this is going. And then I had another dream um, where I just saw awakening, like really bold letters, like above um, when I was meditating and like this really beautiful pink, of course, pink, <laughs> I'm a pink, a uh, pink dreamy space. It was very glowy. It was very ethereal, kind of hard to explain, but it just said awakening. And it almost looks like a sign. Like it was like this, like really just intense, like in my face. And I was like, huh. And then as I sat there and I started kind of journaling, because I love to journal, I got awakening with Allie and I was like oh oh okay that's the name of my show and it just clicked and since then I have connected with the most amazing people in the spirituality space people who have awakened in other industries just all over the map different stories different life paths and so that's what this show honestly I feel like is at least going to start to be about I know it's going to take on whatever life it's meant to take and it will evolve as it's meant to but that's where I see it. My intention is really with this show to not only share my own awakening journey and my own spirit and how I felt so God led over these last few years and what that's meant in my life, but also others to share theirs and everyone's is different, right? And everyone's looks different and to allow the collective to really be in a space of not only vulnerability, but just openness and I open and and have that safe container to be able to have these conversations that I think are happening. I believe more and more um, out there in the world. It's not looking so crazy anymore to have certain conversations. And I believe where we are in the world and, you know, this launching on 2 22 uh, you know, is um, well, for me, I chose that date by the way, because um, those that know me and know my journey already, you probably know why I picked 222, but those that maybe don't, I'll give you a little backstory. So my grandmother, who my first daughter, Amelia, is named after my mom's mom. She was and is uh, like my soul, just like everything to me. Um, She was more than my grandmother. I swear she was like another mom to me. Um, She was very much a very, very strong part of our family. (laughs) I'm going to get a little emotional. Um, I know she's still with me, very much so on the other side. Uh, but she took a piece of me when she passed. Um, and it was probably one of the darkest moments of my life, probably. And, um, when she left this earth in 2013, she passed on 222. Now I was not awake at all to understand how 222 served and what that meant. I wasn't into angel numbers really. I had no clue. I was pretty asleep to most things. Um, and so I'm like, you know, just like blocked off and just very much like, you know, had my head down. And over some time, I started getting more and more signs of 222. And I started just seeing like it everywhere. Even my husband, who hadn't really seen angel numbers before, was seeing it. And my mother in law, my mom, and different family. And it was just like, wow, everyone is seeing this. Like, what does this mean? And it just kept happening. License plates, you know, going out to dinner, receipts. Um, I mean, the time constantly, like you name it, it was 222. So when I thought about the release of this show and I was trying to align with when it should come out, I was actually talking to my cousin because she's very much spiritually awake and um, has been part of my journey. And um, we were talking about like different dates and it, we, it like dawned like on us and we're like, oh my God, this year is to 2222 like you literally can't make that date up like how are you not going to do that date and so it immediately aligned and I felt like 
okay, <laughs> you literally can't make this date up. Like this is the date. And then as I pick that, I started seeing other people posting about 222 and, you know, Pluto return, all this stuff happening. And I honestly didn't even know that it was happening. And so when I started like realizing all these other things lining up, I was like, wow, this show is already like divinely aligned, which was just like, felt so good to me in my soul. And so that's kind of how the 222, I will get further into that in the show and my own journey and so much of my grandmother and spiritual signs and what has led me back to God and all the things that have kind of played out in my life. But um, we'll get into that. But I really just wanted to create this show to, like I said, be a space of service, a space of openness, of truth, of people's own truths. Um, which I know can be very triggering for some people because it's like, oh no, no, there's only one truth. And it's like, that's actually not true. Um, There are many truths. And, you know, in my opinion, and I think being able to have that open space for people to express their truth and to be in a place where we can heal as a collective and have different opinions, but still be able to have those opinions in the safe container is really, really important, especially because so much of what the world is going through right now, you know, as a collective is because we haven't allowed that. Someone has to be right. Someone has to be wrong. We haven't allowed space. We haven't even allowed any type of um, conversation around how someone feels, any type of validation. It's just, you know, you're wrong. I'm right or vice versa. And so I really feel like Awakening with Ali is going to be a space of not only just spirituality, but of different truths and openness and people's journeys and just being able to share what that means to you. What does it mean to awaken or to, you know, wake up or raise your consciousness or whatever, you know, works for you when you're listening to this or, you know, watching this um, that's going on with you, or maybe it's not going on with you yet. Maybe you're just starting to uh, question things. Maybe you're just starting to see things differently. I mean, so many people are in different places right now. And so, that's really how I feel. I feel like how we heal is coming together in a collective to be able to have these open spaces and be able to have these conversations, especially conversations that were, you know, conspiracy and we're crazy and all these things that we're realizing is not true at all. And uh, the more you actually look at someone who is a conspiracy theorist, they're actually a lot more, um, you know, aware. Um, and see things uh, in a way more truthful space and realize that a lot is kind of being blindsided to us and a lot isn't really being told the truth of of us, you know, to to us. And so I just feel like, hey, this space is going to just be about awakening and activating your light within you. You know, I was talking about how I've been a stylist for many years and, you know, between styling different public figures and Hollywood and all the different things. One of my favorite parts of styling that I never really lost um, the way I felt about that, maybe other things, but styling, I always loved watching the transformation in people, that transformation from the inside out, that true, you know, deep soul um, change for them where, you know, they're booking new roles or, you know, they got pregnant or they're dating someone, they got married or all these massive changes. And it's not from the clothing per se, but it's because they started to feel confident again and they tapped into their authentic selves and they awakened to that part of themselves that maybe they didn't know was there or had gotten lost. And I love that about styling. And I, I, I never really realized when I was styling that that was actually a gift of mine. Um, I just thought, you know, I'm good. I get them on best dressed and, (laughs) um, you know, my clients do well and all these things front magazines, you know, uh, like Vogue Italia and, you know, tabloids and all these things that, you know, of course were important when I was in that space. And, you know, as I pulled away from that and realized none of that was really important, but my gift within that was, and I almost like missed my gift because I had so many people in front of me telling me, you know, oh, I'm not right. Or, oh no, that's not what we want. Or, you know, this should be this look and all these things. And I realized like, wow, I had this gift all along that has helped people transform from the inside out. And that's why I've always said confidence is your best accessory. And I really feel like on a very soul level now with where we are in the world, that same transformation from the inside out is so, so, so important that inner work. And, you know, maybe it does come from you starting to put something on and change what you're wearing and go through your closet and kind of go through those heavier energies, even holding and clothes that don't serve you, or maybe it's something else, but I think that, you know, 
um, clothing can actually be way more conscious than many people think about. And I just find it very fascinating, even for myself sitting here thinking about this now is like, oh, wow. Okay. Um, I didn't even know I was going to go on here, honestly, and talk about, and here I am talking about kind of my space and styling and how, even though so much of it didn't, doesn't resonate for me anymore for different reasons that I'll <laughs> go into over time, um, that, you know, that conscious space and the space of where I kind of, I guess, had my gift and awakened, but without really realizing I was awakening that I was helping people transform. And I was helping people, um, awake their light and activate themselves and essentially, you know, come home to who they are. And that's really important to me in this show is I want people to be able to tap in and go as deep as they feel comfortable to, and know, like you are very much in a safe space. And, you know, my intention is truly, you know, just to, I don't, you know, I, I don't know how to say it because it's a healing space for those that need it. It's an open vulnerability space for those that need it. It's a real and raw space for those that need to be able to feel and he and hear real and raw. Um, it's a space for inspiration, for planting seeds, um, for helping awaken, for bringing more light really to this world, to this planet. Like we need it. We need more light. And I've always wanted to be a bright space and a bright light, you know, for my community period. And, you know, I feel like overall I've been that person, like anything else I'm human and I've felt things. And so I've gone in and out over time, but overall that's really been my space and where I've wanted to be, whether it be in the styling space, you know, TV space, mom space, whatever it is. And so that's how I feel with Awakening with Allie. It's like, let's talk about this journey. Let's talk about what it means to uh, come back to yourself, to come back to, you know, God, source, you know, whatever resonates for you, um, how you got there, you know, or how you're getting there. What does it look like? And let's just be real about it. You know, this journey as a human is not easy. Um, and I feel like, you know, now that more and more of us are kind of, learning more and more about ourselves, we're starting to like, really be like, oh, wow, I'm not just this like one thing. And I'm so many things and it can be overwhelming and it can be very alone feeling and you can feel crazy and you can feel, you know, all these different emotions raising my hand so many times I've been there and have had my moments to be there again. And I think one of the biggest parts is like, not only when you awaken to yourself, but that you allow yourself to go through it with grace and you allow yourself to go through the process because nobody knows what we're doing. Nobody knows what's going to happen, no matter what anybody says. And we're all just in this, like riding this wave, right? And so I'm like, hey, let's bring more light. Let's awaken more and help others who maybe haven't awakened yet. And let's just have real deep conversations here where you can feel truly in a space um, of love and light and just know that that's my intention behind this show. And I know that God and spirit is going to lead me to so much more and bring on incredible guests to have so many different types of conversations that I've already started having. And I can't wait to share these guests with you. These, these first guests are just fire. And I know it's going to just continue on like that. And so I just, yeah, I mean, that's really what I wanted to come on and share for this first episode I don't want to get too into everything um, because I do want to share more solo episodes of my own journey as we further dive in to Awakening with Allie. Um, I will say, you know, when I started waking up, I, okay, well, let's see. So I think when I first started like realizing that there was more and the spiritual realm was real and I was coming back to God and I started realizing that there was more than I really originally thought. Um, or originally kind of was told or whatever it may be. I think for me, when my grandmother passed, I went really dark. Uh, I mean, completely dark. And I completely like lost myself on every level of, of the sense of the word, lost myself completely. And, you know, over time, as I started seeing like angel numbers and started seeing just these different connections and I like saw a medium who shared, you know, some different things, which, you know, it was interesting because I had never seen a medium before and they could talk to me about everything of my grandmother, like things that nobody would know. And they brought up the twos and, you know, what it meant and all these different angel alignments. And it was beautiful. It was like the first time I felt like some type of healing and I felt some kind of like awareness. This was probably a year or so after she had passed, I think maybe a little bit after that. 
And so I started slowly awakening from that. And then I started getting more and more signs and I'd be out like at work and I would just see like a random heart somewhere or I would see the two, two, two somewhere. It'd be like an awards thing. And there's the twos and it was all kinds of crazy things. And I was like, what? You can't make this up. Like this just keeps happening. He's happening. And then I shared with my family and then they started seeing all the time. And it was just, you know, on and on. And so that started the journey. And then I really believe, so for those that don't know, or maybe you do know, whatever, maybe I was on a crazy show on Bravo a few years back called Stripped. And uh, you can look that show up if you want to know what that's about. Basically, it's a documentary about having everything taken away from you. Use your imagination. Um, and what do you like? What do you th- um, what do you learn? What do you think about when you go through this 21 day doc- um, documentary, which is your life? Like there's no off time. It's like completely your life for 21 days. And in that time, I had to face a lot of dark shadows, like a lot. Um, and I'll get into that further in the show, too. But um I had a lot of work to do on myself and I hadn't realized how not present I had been for so many years because I think I kind of numbed myself when my grandmother passed away. Well, no, I know I numbed myself. Um, And I, um, I just wasn't wanting to face life. I didn't want to be present. Actually, I didn't want to be here to be quite honest um, on earth physically because my pain was so heavy. Um, And so not only, you know, did I get heavy into my career, um, in Hollywood, but then I also got heavy into just the space of, you know, numbing myself with too much alcohol and parties and maybe doing some drugs I shouldn't do. And, um, you know, just, um, too much Xanax for numbing and, you know, just all kinds of things that just were not helping me were only hindering me and keeping me in a dark space. And I continued to do for quite some time, um, and kind of self-destruct, but my work was going so well. And so I felt like, okay, well, I'm killing it, you know, in this, you know, position and in this career. So like, I'll just keep going, but I wasn't present to my, you know, newly married husband, Justin, who I've, you know, been with for almost um, 10 years now. Um, and then, you know, my family and my friends and the list goes on. I wasn't present to anything. I was only focused on work. And so fast forward, you know, all that plays out and fast forward to being unstripped. And it was wild because the producers kept bringing up like just all these different things to me. Like, how come you get so triggered when we bring up work? Why do you get so upset when we ask about your clients? And I didn't know why at first. I didn't know why I was getting so upset. And then I realized like, because I only do this and like, I don't do anything else. I'm not present to anything else in my life. And like, it really started to bother me. And so during the show, those like dark shadows came through for me and I had so much inner work to do. And now I'm doing this kind of in like fast time because I'm on a show and it's like, I'm not even aware that really I'm doing like this shadow work, this inner work, you know, whatever. And as I'm going through it, like I'm literally so vulnerable and so many conversations are coming up. Like how come you haven't had wanted to have a baby yet. You haven't wanted to start a family. Your husband made it really clear to you when he followed you, you know, from New York where you guys met to California that you guys were going to do that. And the list goes on. And I was so triggered by everything. I was so emotional. I was so triggered. I was so upset that like these questions were being asked of me. And when I started finally like calming down and doing some like inward searching, I started realizing like, wow, it's because I'm not present. It's because I don't think I would be good at any of these things because I only do this and I've like kind of given my life over to this and and I've made no boundaries. And so this has become my life, no matter what it's 2 a.m. They're texting me and they need something. I'm rushing over to that client's house. You know, it's 11 p.m. They have a fashion emergency. I'm at the door. And that was my life for many years. And, um, you know, I said, you know, I set that myself up with that. You know, people can say like, oh, they treated you badly and whatever. And sure, many did, but I allowed it, right? We allow Um, things to happen. And it's our changes and our shifts and our boundaries that shift that and change that. And so I learned that the hard way. And so, you know, after kind of realizing these things, um, shortly after filming, we got pregnant with our first daughter, (laughs) Amelia, which was so not a coincidence by any means, like it was so just divinely guided and God and everything. And, you know, I couldn't believe it. It had happened so quickly. And uh, I was so scared, was so excited all at the same time. And um, as I went through my pregnancy, I just started really feeling disconnected from Hollywood. And I started even feeling like off energies and I was on different sets and just all different things were playing out. And um, I think I was really starting to awaken in that space. And I just felt like nothing's resonating. Like, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. And I really pulled away and very quickly 
um, from everything I had built and done for so long. And it felt like so right to do that. And it was kind of wild for me. Like it was kind of surreal to call my team and say, I don't want to do this anymore. Like it just, I don't want to. And I mean, while I had all these like award shows lined up and clients and all this stuff, and it was kind of like, what are you talking about? And I just, I just didn't like, I don't, I don't know. I, I honestly, I feel like God um, spoke to me and so much came over me and it was just like, no, no, thank you. Um, and I just knew that I was done. I felt it. And um, I kept a couple clients on because I had to finish out some contracts and everything. But overall, you know, I was done. And then came time to have my daughter. And after I had her via um, pretty traumatic birth, which I'll go into another uh, episode, but that was also part of my uh, heavily awakening journey into the spiritual realm and everything. But um, I had a pretty traumatic birth and um, had a C-section after 42 hours. We'll just put that. And so um, as that played out, I had pretty heavy postpartum depression shortly after. And that led me to really going to a dark place again um, and almost having to like go back to my um, heavy um, shadows and just inner work that I hadn't done and so much of my grandmother's passing and just so much for me came up and it was just like, oh my gosh, this is so, it was so intense for me. Like there was just, there was so much. And um, as that was happening, I, um, well, I found the light in the tunnel. Uh, thank God, you know, about a year or so later started to anyways. And as I did, I really found God truly again, um, or maybe for the first time in my life in a whole new way. And my meditation brought me there and my different um, therapies that I went through brought me there. And all of a sudden it was like a light had turned on and I just felt like a completely different person. And I almost didn't like know who I was um, and it, but the, the most beautiful way, because when I went through the postpartum depression and everything had happened, my birth, I felt like I had no idea who I was in a very dark way. And I really felt like I had lost myself. Um, heavily and was really depressed over it and really just um, self-destructive. And when I came out and found the light on their side and really truly found, you know, God for myself and, and so much within myself and came home to myself, um, I found, I started finding inner peace that I hadn't experienced in so long. Um, maybe honestly ever in my life, I'm really not sure, um, but at least, you know, very much in my recent, you know, timeline of how I had been feeling. And uh, it was wild to kind of start to really process that and realize like, oh, wow, I don't know who I am or what I'm doing, but like, I'm happy and like, I'm in a new space and I am just like, so happy where I am now. And this is like the new me. And, and I was like, I don't know, I was activated in a whole new way in this awakening. And then, you know, um, fast forward um, and I, you know, get pregnant again with my second daughter, Arlie, during the wildness of the world in 2020. <laughs> and I felt like I was being tested all over again because, you know, the world was crazy and um, so much was going on, obviously, around me. And being, when we were in California, you know, we weren't allowed to have our husbands um, be there for the births. Um, and, you know, you definitely weren't allowed to have your doula. And there were all these things going on. And I was spinning. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is when I'm going to give birth. Like, this is crazy. And I really had to tap back into all the things I kind of learned in my first go around with my, you know, first daughter and like start surrendering massively, like massively on a scale. I really didn't never um, feel like I had ever surrendered in before. And I really had to surrender and be like, okay, it's going to be okay. It's going to work out. I'm going to surrender to this. And I got into my practices of meditation again, very heavily and breath work, which I recently got certified in over the last year, because I feel like it's served me so much in my life. And I've watched so many transformations within friendships and communities and all of that. And so I started doing all these practices and journaling and back to my gratitude journals and all of these things. And as I did that, I started realizing like, okay, you know what? I can't control the outside, but you know, I can control my inside and I can keep things calm here, get back to my inner peace and all these things. And once I did, it all kind of just started to like calm inside of me, even though the world was still insane. And I found this like beautiful inner peace again, the inner peace I had first discovered when I kind of first found the light in the tunnel after everything with Amelia. 
and you know everything had played out in my first year being a mom and so I was able to like really harness that goodness and step into it and it was really really powerful for me and um I um you know that whole time being pregnant with Arlie and the world being wild and everything was still constant surrender and a constant like just trusting 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 because there was so much constantly every week was switching oh she might come early oh then we'll have to keep her as long you know in the hospital oh you know you might have you know um this going on you know whatever with fluids so then you know we might have to do this like it was just constant constant, constant. I felt like I was literally being challenged 24 7 did you learn your lesson did you did you pay attention like all this stuff I was like oh my gosh but I just kept surrendering I kept surrendering and allowing my body and allowing myself and trusting myself and it got to you know 42 weeks where you know they didn't even think I was going to make it because originally she was trying to come way early and I got to 42 weeks, like literally two days before 42 weeks. And they were like, now they're talking about inductions and they're talking about all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Cause I, uh, backstory, I had planned a VBAC vaginal birth after a C-section, I had a C-section with Amelia. And I really wanted to have a VBAC with my second daughter. And so I had worked on all these different things and I had really worked on my mindset and done chiropractic work and acupuncture and all these different tools that I'd really researched. And, you know, um, and like birth trauma work and just, you know, all these different things that I really felt like helped me get to that moment of like preparing for a VBAC, right? And so then, you know, again, the world's crazy and they're like, you know, we're not sure because of everything going on. And now we probably have to induce because it's taking so long and, you know, all these things and got to love the medical industry, you know, if you're not right at the time, it's like, let's go, you know, it's like babies and souls, they have, you know, they make their own decisions. They know when they're coming, um, in my opinion. Um, and so, you know, it's like, unless it's like an emergency, it's like, let them do what they got to do. And that was the thing we kept checking and she was totally fine. So it was like, let's just keep going. And so I pushed back and it was like, let's just keep going. And so anyways, um, the night before I was supposed to go in and get checked again, um, and potentially schedule another induction, um, I went into labor and I just remember in that moment when it happened, I remember being like, oh my gosh, like I allowed myself to get here. Like I surrendered to allow her to come through. And like, I didn't really know what that full surrender was. And so, you know, I get in my tub and I start doing like my hypnobirthing and I'm breathing and I'm meditating. And I just remember tapping in so much, so much than I ever had before in my life to myself, to my body, to my baby. And I could just feel her and see her and hear her like in the most magical spiritual way. And I knew like that things were great and she was moving along and everything was great. And so anyways, fast forward, uh, you know, I go to the hospital um, after being in the tub for quite some time and I get there and I'm already like past transition and they're like shocked that I've gone, you know, was that like this far in labor and all this stuff. And, and so it was really, it just showed me like, wow, when you surrender, like things really can happen. And I've learned like the more we resist, the more it persists and the more we surrender and allow ourselves that surrender, the more actual beauty can come of it. It's really hard to surrender. Right. Um, and I'm definitely learning in all different aspects of my life. And so anyways, um, the reason I share this and I will share, um, my birth stories and way more, um, detail in, on this show, kind of, as I go into more of my awakening journey and spiritual journey. But the reason I share this is because, you know, after, um, I, you know, um, was going for my VBAC and we got to the end and everything was great. She got stuck for a moment. And I just remember in that moment, again, being like, here we go again, I got to surrender. Like it was going smoothly. And then there was like a hiccup and like, I was like to fever and like, now I have to surrender. And I remember in that moment for a second, wanting to go to fight or flight, right? Cause it's easier to go there. It's kind of like, you know, that comfort zone, but I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. And I allowed myself to surrender. And I looked at my husband and I said, can I have my earbud? I'm going to listen to my meditation. And he gave my earbud. I got my phone. I went to my fear releasing meditation. I put it on, I shut my eyes and I just, you know, dreamed. And I just really meditated and got to another state. And I just said, like, trust my baby, trust my body, like, God help me like release this surrender, whatever I need to do. Like let's, you know, let's do this. And in that moment, I swear it felt like such an out of body experience when I saw myself pushing her out while I was like watching it happen. I've never experienced that before. And I 
like, I don't know, it was surreal. And as it was happening, I was seeing like this really beautiful, like pink, again, this pink, like ethereal, beautiful, like almost like cloud-like energy. Um, and I don't know how to even explain it because it was so surreal. And um, as that happened, like, I, you know, I pushed and there she was, and then I heard the crying. And then all of a sudden I was like holding her and it was like, I was back in my body and I was a part of the experience, but I'd always been a part of it. And it was surreal. I couldn't believe it. Like I had pushed her out and I had my feet back. And it was, my husband describes this postpartum euphoria because I had such a high and I was so like on cloud nine and I was just in another realm and I was so happy and I was so, it was so re- not just redeeming for me, but it was so empowering in my own surrender. It taught me so much about myself and how powerful I am and really truly all of us are and we've not really been taught that power that we have within ourselves and it just brought me to such a higher space and a higher realm in my consciousness that it woke me up to a whole new level like I just I felt activated in a whole new way and I come home to myself in the most divine beautiful moment and so it was just it's just another part of my awakening journey which is why I share it um and it was beautiful. And ever since then, I feel even more tapped in. And Arlie is just such a little like Perry baby, I call her. She's so always in another realm, always like, ooh, what is she looking at? What is she like? There's so much to her. It's just so cool to watch her um, evolve and her personality. And you could just tell like she, to me as an old soul, she's been here before and she's taking things all in and she's like totally just in this magical space. It's really, really cool. And I think because I'm so conscious of it, um, I'm able to take it in and kind of see it for what it is and, or what I think it is, you know? Um, and it's just, it's really beautiful. Um, and I think the more I've woken up and the more I become so conscious in my own life, the more present I get, I was like the queen of auto grind. (laughs) If you know me, you know, um, or if you know, you know, me and have followed my journey, like any part of my community, like, you know, um, and if you don't, then you're getting a very present more Zen version of Ali that didn't exist a few years ago. I didn't know what present was, presence. I didn't know what being here now in the moment meant. I did not know how to slow down. I smell the roses, as my dad says. I did not know how to, um, I didn't know how to breathe, to be quite honest. It's kind of funny that I got <laughs> um, certified in breath work because now it's like one of my favorite practices and I love helping other people with it and facilitating it because it's like a game changer. But I just wasn't present. I didn't know how to be. I didn't, I don't think I wanted to be, honestly. I was an auto grind because it was more comfortable to be an auto grind. It was more comfortable to be asleep, if you will, and be kind of just unconscious to life and just keep going and, and not have to face things, not have to see things. Um, not have to see my own inner shadows, my own work that I needed to do. It was just easier just to move along, just move along. I know that comfort zone, just keep going. And that worked for a while until it didn't. And then I crashed big time, hence the postpartum depression. Um, And so that's kind of what led me to this journey. I mean, there's so much more (laughs) that I'll definitely be sharing on other episodes as I get further into this of um, waking up in Hollywood and what that meant. And, um, you know, again, my births, um, you know, within my pregnancies, just different things that I'll definitely be sharing um, around, you know, my life and my journey. But I really am just so excited to have you all here along with me for this journey. I don't know where it's going. (laughs) Um, I don't, you know, truly know what to expect, but I'm excited. I'm excited um, for these conversations. I feel very honored to be able to Um, you know, use my platforms that I already have to then further this conversation, because I really do feel in the world, we need more of these conversations. Uh, We need people to collectively come together and awaken to whatever it may be in their own lives, to do inner work, to help each other. You know, how do we move through things, right? How do we start to heal? We have to see it, then we have to feel it, unfortunately, (laughs) and then we move forward and we heal it, ideally. Um, and that's been a huge part of my process. And so, you know, awakening and coming home to myself and activating within myself has been so much of that and continues to be like continuing to do the inner work and continuing to show up for myself. And 
um, learning how to hold space for myself and others and learning how to, you know, especially in these crazy times, uh, work through the energies of the world and um, shift and be um, a place of compassion. Um, and there's just so much more, right? There's, it's so intense right now in the world, especially if you're more conscious and awake to what's going on. It's a lot more intense. And, it, and I feel like it's only going to ramp up um, for my own personal intuitive feelings. Um, and so it's kind of like hilarious to me that this airs on 222 because of course I picked up my angel numbers from my grandmother, as I called her, my dodo. Um, she always knows best and she always has a much bigger plan and picture with everything in my life. I realized that with so much that she's also divinely orchestrated. Um, she is one of my special angels among many that I have, and I'm very grateful for. And, um, I realized after I picked this and I started seeing people post for the Pluto return, all these things going on, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> Apparently there's a reason why I really aligned with this date. Um, so it's really cool. And I'm just really, really honored to have you here and um, let's awaken together. Let's come together collectively. Let's, you know, get deep. Let's get vulnerable. Let's brighten our lights. Let's, you know, let's help others shine their lights. That's what we're here to do. That's where we're going as a collective. I truly feel um, we may be in a dark time right now, but there is so much light coming. There is so much good coming. And I really believe that we are going to be the guiding lights. And we are going to be the changes and the shifts. Um, we, the people are going to be that. And so why not start with these conversations of going deep and allowing that vulnerability and um, allowing that light to come through because we all have it within us. It's just a matter of tapping into it. And wow. Do we need that more than ever right now with everyone? So I will leave it at that. Thank you so much for listening to my first episode of Awakening with Allie. And I look forward to further diving in to awaken, activate, go deeper with you. And uh, if you have any comments, feedback, questions, please feel free to DM me on my social at Allie Levine Design or at the new Instagram. Please make sure you follow Awakening with Allie all one word. We'll have it in the show notes, or you can email aldassistant at gmail.com or ali at design.com And that'll also be in the show notes. And I thank you so much. And a big thank you to Soak, um, who helped me create my beginning and end of this show. I have to say, I really struggled when it came to what is this going to be as far as like intro music or, you know, the intro of this show and the ending of this show, because most shows, you know, you have a standard, you know, intro and outro, but I really felt like the call, you know, my spirit was like, mm -mm, this has to be something more because this show is something more. And I was like, oh, what's that going to be? And I got to do this incredible collaboration with Soak recently uh, over the last six months with my breath work where they've supported me to have some of my breath work on their amazing app and website. And that'll be in the show notes as well. And Soak is an incredible way of tapping into digital sound frequency. Um, and it is so powerful. And I highly suggest you check it out. Sound frequency has also been one of my modalities I've heavily dove into. And it's so healing and shifting and incredible in so many ways. Um, and so, you know, when we had done my breath work, they had helped me come up with different frequencies to put with it. And so I had asked them, hey, could we possibly do that for my show? And they were so incredible and amazing and graceful to say, yes, we can. And so when you listen and you hear it at the end here, and you also heard it at the beginning, just know that that is Soak, um, courtesy and exclusively of Soak for my show. And I will put that in the show notes. You guys can use my code, Allie, capital A-L-I, 70. If you do want to try your first month of Soak and get 70% off, it's our gift to you. We want everyone to tap in and get into those amazing you know, just incredible frequencies that help you in so many ways. They have so many types of frequencies from sleep for anxiety, um, for, you know, mental health, for hormones. I mean, the list goes on, um, abundance, like there's so many, and there's so many other amazing, um, programs and offerings on there as well, besides my breath work. Um, so it's just magical. And I'm so honored to share that space with them and be a part of it. So I will put that in the show notes as well. 
All right, loves, thank you so much for listening or watching. Um, it's an honor to be a part of this. I really am just so excited to see where this goes. And um, I don't know <laughs> how to say it. Um, I'm lit up, honestly. I feel like this is um, where I'm meant to be right now. Um, it feels right. It feels in alignment. It feels divinely guided. And I'm grateful. So thank you so much for listening and for watching. Um, and this will be on all platforms as it comes out. We'll make sure to, you know, update the links um, for where it'll be. It'll start on Anchor as that's where I produce. And then depending on where it gets picked up and everything, um, we will share that. And um, what else? I mean, I think that's, you know, that's that's my first solo episode. I'm a talker, if you can't tell. <laughs> so um, I could go on and on, but I really feel like I gave you guys a good amount of where this is going, what you can expect with this show. Like I said, the guests are epic. I've had so many, um, I'll give you a quick um, tease of the guests. I have some incredible um, public figures, um, even a, a breathwork expert. I have some really amazing um, spiritual, um, you know, healers, advisors, um, angel coaches. I mean, you name it. I am looking for the gold of guests for this show for you guys. So I'm really excited to see who else aligns and who else I record with. And I already have so many incredible episodes I can't wait to share with you. You're going to just dive in and just seriously soak it all up. <laughs> um, these people are incredible and I'm honored that they're getting to be a part of my show. And I already have so many amazing guests booked out for the next few months. So um, yeah. So with that, I will say love, light, style and blessings to all of you. Thank you so much for being here with Awakening with Allie. Until next time, keep spreading your light and keep being the light. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.